All right. Hey, everyone. Tell me if my audio sounds bad. Tell me if it sounds good. Um, it's been about... How long has it been? I think the last stream I did that was about DOSBot programming was at the start of 2020 before, uh, before everything happened. Not to worry. So this is, we're starting kind of clean over. I have a copy of the source code. So let's drag that onto here. Um, this is how I'm going to copy stuff from my VM to the host. I'm just going to be using SSH. So we have our bot code here. Um, looks kind of simple in retrospect, but today we're going to be discussing and then resetting everything back up. Um, this is also kind of intended as an introduction video. If you've missed the first 14 parts, because I would not blame you for skipping them. Uh, so first off, let's talk about what DOS is. Um, DOS, if we search it up, MS-DOS is an operating system for x86 compatible computers. That's pretty cool. It ended with Windows Millennium. Daddy DOS and Mummy Mac? No. Um, but this isn't entirely accurate. Because, say, the computer I'm streaming this on can run DOS, right? It's compatible. Modern computers are still backwards compatible to an extent with DOS. Um, so, is that in the spirit of things? Should we just dump DOS on a very fast computer? Well, that doesn't seem right, does it? That seems kind of cheating. So we kind of want to be a bit more period accurate. So perhaps DOS is about the IBM PC. So if we jump over to the IBM PC, we can see what kind of machine this was. It was a Intel 8088 CPU microcontroller. That's what we would call it these days. Um, and it ran DOS. So that's pretty cool. In fact, if we search up Homebrew 8088, and go to this website, we can actually find an 8088 Raspberry Pi project. Um, I believe this could be it unless they've changed it. 88 Raspberry Pi second project. This person's website is a bit over it. So this is just a PCB that connects an 8088 to a Raspberry Pi. That seems pretty cool, right? Is this DOS? Well, kind of. It emulates everything else than just the CPU, but it runs the CPU as an actual piece of hardware. That's a bit strange. Is that like emulation? There's also... Um, running it on an FPGA, which is like a programmable piece of silicon. And you can run a 486 on it with Windows 95. And that works. Is that DOS? This is more compatible than this. Because, well, maybe not. But this has its own BIOS. 
and then DOS on top of it. So you could write a program that works on this as well as this and this, the three machines that I've just talked about. Um, but what would that be? So I think, I think the thing in common that we're going to target is running at an 8088 processor um, with a DOS system that runs the DOS API, which is the DOS interrupts. Are we gonna run it on actual hardware? No, because it's really, really expensive to even do that and the chips are dying. So, let's also talk a bit more about the actual PC architecture, because when you hear DOS, usually it implies the IBM PC architecture. And here's a picture of it. Um, it has an 8088 CPU. It has, I don't have this labeled, so I don't, I'm not gonna be very good at this, but I believe that is the bus controller. So the 8088 is connected to a bus, which has a whole bunch of peripherals on it. Um, that's a 13 or 19, I don't have that. Um, Up. I do have this PDF that might help us understand a bit more. This is for an older machine, I think. It has schematics everywhere, so that might not actually help that much. If we actually go and we search up Wikipedia IBM PC motherboard, There is an actual thing that is labeled on Wikipedia. So if we search down here and go here, uh, more details. Yes, so this actually has all the parts labeled. Wikipedia supports annotations. So we can see here what every part is. So we have the CPU, a place for the floating point coprocessor, the interrupt controller, that would be the programmable interrupt controller, the bus controller, some slots which just connect things to the bus, um, the keyboard connector which gets connected to the programmable peripheral interface. Let's see if we can find that. Apparently not. It might be around here somewhere, I would imagine, maybe not. Um, there's a clock generator. Here's the programmable peripheral interface. And there's a DMA controller. Then there's a timer. And then there's some ROM stuff. And then there's some RAM and just logic gates to glue it all together. This stuff is all very um, simple. These days it would all just be combined into a single chip. Um, so all these chips would go into a single chip and that would be fine. So if we search up Vortex 486, we can actually find Vortex 86. We can actually find a chip that does that somewhat. Of course, the 486 has a kind of north bridge and south bridge and the stuff. But the important thing to kind of remember is that when you program for a DOS machine, this is the interface that DOS programs generally expect. They don't just expect the CPU. They also expect uh, the bus controller, the clock generator, um, the interval timer, the interrupt thing, all that. So I wouldn't say that this is the dots we're targeting here. So 
I think what we're going to target is DOSBox because DOSBox emulates all this. So let's install DOSBox now. Um, and that also answers the question of which DOS we're going to use. Previously, I've been using free DOS, but we're just going to use DOSBox DOS. And that is because it gives us access to the file system in a sneaky way, because DOSBox doesn't emulate perfect hardware. Like you can still access the hardware and talk to the hardware. Um, but if you call a DOS API, DOSBox will convert it to whatever your operating system is using, a bit like Wine. So let's install DOSBox X. This is version 83.18. And we're also going to download some tools. Um, something I've thought about is how are we going to actually work on something meant for DOS? Back in the day, would you use a DOS machine to develop it? They didn't do that for like Doom. Um, so I think we're just going to use a cross compiler. So we're going to use open Whatcom and cross compile it from Linux here into the DOS machine and then run it in DOS. Um, and one reason for that, that I just made up right now is because you can't run open Whatcom on an 8088. Am I making the next Doom? No. Um, this, is, this all depends if open Whatcom lets me download it. We might have to download it from GitHub. Open Whatcom version two. Let's go to the releases. Current build. Those are all pre-releases, but that should be fine. Um, we'll grab the, there's two sets of them. There's the C and then there's the F77. I don't know what the difference is. Um, I'm gonna go with the C one. Or we could probably just grep the repo here, couldn't we? F77. BLD F77. Check the commits and see what F77 is. Um, it just kind of assumes that we know what F77 is. The F77 front end is very old and has its own Fortran 77. Yeah, we're not going to be doing Fortran on stream today. I'm sorry. So let's download the Linux version. And that's a executable. So if it gives me a virus, this is chat's fault. So we're going to launch DOSBox X. It's going to want to know where we're going to run the emulation. So we're going to go to our desktop bot and we're going to make a folder called um, DOSBox, just call it DOSBox, okay? Yes, we'd like to use it again in future sessions. And here we go, we have a DOSBox. The colors look a little bit different than I remember, to be honest. Um, we're in Z drive, um, and it bundles a whole bunch of DOS utilities. Do we have a C drive? No. So let's mount 
Um, I'm not sure what paths I have here actually. So let's just do mount E slash. So let's do E drive. Um, home, Jukia. Okay, so this is using my actual directory path. So we can do mount C drive, um, home, Jukia, desktop, bot, um, and let's do drive C, and we'll quickly make that as a directory. It says it doesn't exist. Um, which is sad because I'm pretty sure it exists. We might have to restart it, but let's configure this first. Let's just make the video a bit bigger. Um, can we maximize this? Uh, that doesn't look too good, does it? Output. OpenGL nearest, perfect, surface, um, and let's try putting the scaler up. I was in the bathroom and I remembered me. I then came to Twitch and I was here. It was fate. I'm very glad. Force scaler. That doesn't help. Normal 2x. Um, this might be fine enough. We're just going to be using it for running stuff. Let's go to the configuration tool. Um, let's actually just edit the file. So let's quit from DOSBox. Uh, we have our drive C there. Um, does this have a DOSBox configuration file? Probably not. Um, let's run DOSBox. I'm not sure what the name of the program is. DOSBox X? No, when you install flat packs, they have... They put it somewhere strange. I'm not seeing it here. Does Mate not understand that I have DOSBox installed? Flat pack run DOSBox. Flat pack list. So it's com.dosbox x.dosbox x. So that's not in my path. So let's just do flat pack run. There we go. It hasn't saved our settings. So let's make a configuration file. And let's mess with this a little bit. Um, okay, I need the comments for everything. Okay, so the actual DOSBox directory is the actual configuration file is somewhere strange. So we're just going to do use portable configuration and then save, then close that and look if it's in this directory. Yep. You've noticed issues with applications not being picked up by the mate menu somehow. Um, yeah. Also, hi there. Um, let's just quickly check if it's installing it properly. So when you install an application in Linux, um, it should put something in local share applications, but it doesn't seem to do that here. Hmm var app so it's installed in var app but it's not installed there uh, it could be that i'm missing a setting or it could be that this is broken so but who knows welcome to the uh stream trying to go for a bit of a chill thing here ignore the 4k big bug bunny web am i have <laughs> uh that's for another stream if you'll believe it. So let's edit this configure. Let's verify that we can run it first. Thick bunny. 
Big Buck Bunny genuinely creeps me out. So if I specify this configuration file, will it find it? Let's see. I believe it would. So you might just have to make a program to run. Let's quickly do a little run thing there. And then let's open up DOSBox X config. Um, zoom please. Oh, okay. The magnifying glass means fine. Tools, options, edit, preferences. Okay, it says system fixed width font. That implies I can change it probably, but I'm not going to. So we're gonna go through the configuration of DOSBox here. What if Big Bunny came into your room at night and just stared at you? I would cry. So, let's just figure out, we'll do the configuration from within DOSBox, I think, so we can save it easily. So video, we're gonna make it full screen. We're gonna use a scaler, I guess. Um, or is this just fine? This looks fine. I don't know what I've done. Um, we want, do we want to enable the aspect ratio correction so it can look like actual DOS? Um, I've been doing that so far, so I guess we will. Um, it's very strange. Sintel was better. Uh, I have. Sintel is a great film and I have such mixed feelings about it and that is probably why I think it's a great film. Um, you can change the text mode here. Ooh, that's fancy. We're not going to use it because it's very hard to see, but um, that's pretty cool. We're also just going to go through here. So this resolution and everything looks fine. CPU, core, uh, we're gonna go to 8086 for now. We have the option of having it with prefetch, but prefetch is a little interesting. If you use prefetch, it means that code can't easily modify itself because by the time it's modified, say the next instruction, the instruction has already been copied to the prefetch unit. It's a unique style. Okay. Auto cycles, normal core. We have an 8086 here. Sound, we're just gonna mute it. Um, DOS, reported DOS version, five looks good. Long file name, I don't care. Expanded memory, we're going to disable expanded memory. So we, we're we gonna die on the hill that we're going to limit ourselves to 640K. Host system applications, that's pretty cool. Um, anything else we need to set here? Drive C. Oh, you can mount disk images and archive files and stuff. It's a nice interface here. There's a lot of nice stuff here. Unique, yeah. Ah, uh, it's 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 unique. Okay. So now let's quickly just look through here to look at the advanced options. This all looks fine. Um, dust box. There's a lot of stuff here. I don't want to put down other people who are doing their best. 
No, it's just that it's it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. There is a lot of settings here. Let's go to main. Um, help. Let's turn off the banner. And skip the BIOS logo. DPI aware. Show advanced options. I think we want that. Host key mapper. We're just going to go through here, have a look at some stuff that catches our eyes. What is autosave? So we have a machine and that decides what type of machine we're going to emulate. So we might mess with that. Making something ugly on purpose can be artful on itself. Yeah. I think the Blender stuff has always had a slightly off-putting style to me. So SVGA S3, do we want that as our machine? I mean, we'll just keep it that way. It's not like we're gonna be doing any fancy stuff. Yes, I was looking for autosave. Auto save captures. So is that a save state thing? Fancy. Mem size. Let's set this to 640 or one. It's in megabytes, I think. Mem size KB. Uh, I don't think. Okay, so yeah. I think we have to enable advanced options here and then we can scroll down and oh my God, there's so much more. Um, and we're gonna do Mem size. Where is the mem size? DOS mem limit. Okay, so we're going to go for 640k. You're her masterpiece. Oh. Okay, well, that, uh, I, mm. It turns out if you enter K in mem size KB, it does not work. So what we're going to do is just ignore that. And the size is different again. Is that just because I full screened it before? Yes, it does fit to aspect ratio. Um, let's edit the cycles. That's fine. All this is fine. Let's just get on with it. Um, we're going to look at CPU real quick. Core. What core can we do? Um, auto is fine. CPU type 8086. Cycles. That's all fine. This is all fine. Everything is fine. So let's head on down to network. So we're going to enable the network. Um, Nick IQ three backend order. What is order? Okay. So it will go to slurp if it's available. Okay. I think this should be fine. I mean, I wrote the code. <laughs> I wrote the code that does the networking part with Slurp, but I, I'm a bit out of it. Okay, that's right. I don't like the blurry part. So let's just 
jump that up. Maybe for scalar. No, too big, too big. None. Mm, okay. OpenGL nearest. There we go. So let's save this. And I think we just need to, it's not going to maximize by default. So let's now enter some stuff in our auto exec. So mount C drive and let's put drive C in here. Mount C drive there. We also need the networking package. So let's get into that now. We're going to need um, N. Uh, we're going to need a DOS packet driver for the NE2000. And we're going to, oh, packet drivers DOS.net. Is this a new website? <gasps> it's a new DOS website. <gasps> Does this have the driver that I used for my EPC? It might. I might have to, oh, it says 2008 to 2021. I fit, uh, hmm. I'll have to, I'm not gonna pretend that I'll investigate that later. So we're going to need a packet driver from Cywarner. And we're also going to need MTCP. Now, a newer version of MTCP has come out since last time. I don't really want to play with my luck to see if the new code is going to give me issues or not. So what we are going to do is find the old code here. 2020. Okay, so there's been two new versions. Yes, so I was using the 2013 version. Um, it should be fine. There's probably no reason not to upgrade to the new decade. All right, so let's create a little bin folder here. Uh, actually, let's just name it MTCP in our drive C. And we're going to dump that in there. Sick. And we're going to grab our MTC configuration files. And dump it in drive C as well. Um, and we're going to display it. This is not the right file. This is for something else entirely. So we're going to quickly look at the readme and look at how to add a configuration file. So let's just see. Actually, no, there is probably a sample configuration here. MTCP. There is not a set. Oh, there is sample.configuration. So we're going to name that MTCP.configuration. Packet int 60 MTU 1500. Uh, I, I remember something about MTUs, but we'll look at that later. Um, and we'll just leave this as fine. So we're going to also set path equals C drive bin. I think you can append to paths like that. Let's not worry about that for now. Let's just open up DOSBox. Hmm. Okay. So we obviously want to change to drive C. Do we have like a message up there? Is that green? Okay. So set MTCP config equals C drive MTCP dot config. So let's write that as well.
we're now going to do mtcp slash dhcp. That's right, we don't have a packet driver. I don't know why I forgot about that. So we're going to grab the one for the NE2000. It's in many other drivers.zip. We're going to dump that just in the C drive. So how do we do this? 60, I think it was interrupt three. That looks correct. So let's jot that down. And then we're going to write in also mtcp dhcp.exe. Okay. Hmm. Uh oh. Uh oh. Problem. Do I need to set the base? Hang on. I did. I don't. I don't think I messed it up. No, because it might be six then. Interrupt six. Oh, I don't like this. Okay. Uh oh. Is, is this broken? Is my code broken upstream? Or, I mean, I don't think so. Oh no. Um, let's just change our host. Yeah, let's set the IPs manually and skip the DHCP. So let's edit the configuration. Packet in 60. We'll comment that. Host name, DOS rules, whatever. So IP address 10.2. Is it 0.2.16? That should be fine. And the gateway would be the host, which is two. So I believe that is correct. Let me just double check. Yep. So let's try um, HTGET. I need to put the HTTP there. Packet int must be set. Okay, my bad. My lease has expired. Well, that's okay. Let's just clean this up a bit. Here we go. Save. Could not access packet driver. That's correct. Okay, so something is not working. Oh shit. That shouldn't happen. Why is it giving errors about reading underrunning? Okay, um, not to worry. We're just going to, we're not going to panic or anything because I was prepared for this. Definitely. We're going to try a different interrupt. And that doesn't seem to do anything at all. Okay. All right. Ha ha. Hmm. 
So a normal person would say, what has happened? How could this happen to me? But is it trying to use PCAP? Could it be that I have for some reason forsaken myself and instead of using PCAP, I need to set this to slurp? Could that be? Guys, could that be what it is? I'm a hundred percent sure. Shit, I lost my auto exit. I'm a million percent. I think, I think this has got to be what it is. Why wouldn't it be this? I've lost my DOS box configuration again. All right. C drive, any 2000. Uh, zero times 63. Cosmos laundromat is very nice. Did I just say laundromat? Cosmos laundromat is pretty good. Let's go and try this now. Perfect. It doesn't work. All right. Um, okay. Um, this should work, but I might actually just be in denial here, huh? Um, I just... I just thought, I just thought this would work, but apparently not. So let's try using an older version. So this is version eight, uh, what? Yes, yes, please quit. So we're going to open up flat pack. And there's version 0.18. So if we search up DOSBox X and we look at the change log, it could be that a, f a feature or something has broken. Um, so let's go to, is it, does it have a version history? Does it have an issue tracker? Let's search up network. Okay, sanity check first. Is it possible that I have messed this up with my config? I've set up the wrong RAM or DMA or something. I'm just gonna blame myself for a second. And we're just gonna open up a new DOS box, cracking open a new one. Um, and so let's go mount C, C drive, Hang on, we probably need to set up the networking, right? Auto, yep, 300. Slurp, yep, yep. Wait, it didn't say, I might need to reset virtual machine. So it says up here that slurp initialized. So let's do mount C drive, home, Jukia desktop, uh, bot dot box drive C, C drive, any 2000.com, zero times 60, um, three, um, set MTCP config equals C drive MTCP.config. And then let's run MTCP slash HTGET.exe, Jukia.org. All right. Okay. What the... Mm, that's actually worse than before, if you think about it, because before it was not calling broken interrupts. Hmm. Okay. 
so <laughs> embarrassing, but we, we're just going to quickly I'm going to quickly set this up here and we're just going to delete everything up here. All right. It's actually a lot of stuff to delete. Let's use Vim because this text editor is not that great. I don't know what I just did. Okay. I see what I did. We're going to give that, 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 and then just leave auto exit. So this should be fine. Um, let's run it. All right. And let's run mtcp slash htget.exe. And let's get our website downloaded after we set the configuration value. And it works. Easy, easy peasy. I don't know why it doesn't work. Should we? So we're going to do video output OpenGL perfect. No output OpenGL nearest. All right, we're going to save. Um, we're going to wonder what's happened here. So let's save this. And now let's try resetting it and we shall see reboot guest system or reset virtual machine. It's already a packet driver. So the reset doesn't work very well. So what we're going to do now is um, be confused, but we're also going to change some settings here. Um, let's change it so, let's change the CPU. Start banner false, fast BIOS logo true. And we're going to change the CPU. Where is the CPU? We're going to change it to CPU type. Uh, 8086. And let's boot it now. Uh, Sick. All right. Is it auto? Is the CPU type incompatible? Okay. So setting the CPU type to 8086 breaks it. That is okay though. Um, we're just going to set the CPU type to 8186. Yeah, that should be fine. Perfect. There. So it's not a 32 bit machine. It is 16 bit. So an hour into the stream, and we've managed to set up DOSBox. It is quite easy to set up as long as you uh, wrote the code that you know how to debug. So next thing we're going to do is set up our tool chain. So we have our code directory here with our make file and stuff. Let's open a terminal because let me also shut my blinds because it's too bright. Uh, let's install Tmux. I'm glad it tells me I can download it through a snap and that the snap version is older. So 
I don't know why I would want that, but okay. So we have our code here and we have our open whatcom. So let's run this open whatcom. Let's chmod it. Open whatcom. Is that a virtual machine? Is this machine here a virtual machine? Like, uh, yeah, let's zoom out for a second. This is the machine here. It's actually running invert manager. Um, so that's nice. It's para virtualized. So yeah, let's go back to the window capture. There we go. Oh, this hurts. This hurts. Ouch. What, what is happening here? I agree. I think. Install it in user bin whatcom. All right, let's try going for help. If you do not want to upgrade, so let's try and set the whatcom directory. Is there like a script? No. Okay. All right. That's fine. Maybe there's actually like a tarball I can get. Mm. No, we'll go, we'll do it the right way. So we're going to make a whatcom directory. Um, power virtualized. Yeah. So power virtualization is where it doesn't emulate a lot of resources. Instead, it allows the machine, um, to use fake interfaces. So if we look at power virtualization in Wikipedia, it shows nothing, but if we find the Zen page for it, um, it also doesn't show anything helpful. So I'm actually going to have to explain this. Um, you know how let's use an example with DOSBox. No, that's a bad example. Okay. So this is Linux here. Um, if we look at what we have, um, for our block devices, we have dev VDA. Um, if we do LS PCI, you see, we have a ton of these para virtualized stuff. So this doesn't emulate a kind of hard drive controller or a USB controller or ethernet controller. Instead, it uses the vertio interface. So if we search up what the vertio is, um, what happens is it doesn't emulate hardware, but it provides a convenient interface that the VM will implement. Um, so I can't find anything very useful to show. There's no diagrams. Oh, DuckDuckGo as images. This might be helpful. It looks kind of helpful. I don't know. Yeah, so basically, instead of emulating actual hardware, it emulates um, a custom piece of like vert IO hardware that doesn't exist in the real world, but it exists in emulators. And it's optimized for emulators. So if I used a regular emulator of Skizzy or something for my hard drive, SATA, then it would have to emulate all of the SATA stuff. But with Vert.io, it can just emulate a block device that Linux just passes straight through. Para virtualization rule 34. All right, let's search that up. Para virtualization rule 34. And I'm going to hit enter because I trust you and I'm pretty sure that you know more than me. So I'm just going to hit enter right now. And it should come up with what we need to know, correct? No? 
Okay. Um, it was a juke. Get banning. All right. So there is actually an easy way to explain this to you. Um, the difference. So if we go to QMU's documentation, QMU is the emulator that Linux stuff uses. So if we go to system emulation, um, let's look for machines. Um, this is a bit of an aside, but that's okay. If we look for Yes, you'll see this come up. QMU standard PC, i440 FX PIX 1996. So this is kind of the block device here or this particular chipset that QMU emulates. So you can see here, it has um, the CPU, then a bus, then the North bridge, which connects to the RAM and PCI. Then on the PCI bus, there's um, a VGA adapter and an Ethernet controller, the E1000. And then on the, and there's a PIX South bridge, which connects to an IDE bus and includes SM bus, DMA PIC, then an ISA bus, then an X bus and an IDE bus. QMU emulates all of these and all of the peripherals and they emulate them in such a way that real software can run on them that expects these type of peripherals. So for example, um, if you want a program that uses this specific Ethernet controller, E1000, um, QMU will pretend to be that hardware. It will emulate it. Does that make sense? That's what emulation is, but um, if we search up E1000, you can see the emulated code here is based on Intel's development, uh, Intel's um, developer manual, and it emulates actual hardware. And so the downside is, is that this is meant to be actual hardware, but it's emulated using a CPU on a computer, which means you have overhead for this. So all this code here in reality would be running on the actual Ethernet card itself in parallel to your main computer. And it's very big and very complex. However, what if it emulated a made up piece of hardware that was convenient to emulate? Convenient because it could say, just copy it to the host system. That's what vertio is. So we find vertio and let's see if we can find the networking vertio device. Vert IO net. And so it's a lot more code, but it's intended to interface with um, the host system instead of pretending to be something. So it's faster. I mean, I think I'm pretty sure Um, but all this adds up. So we have this block device controller here, which means that the virtual machine doesn't have to emulate, say the SATA protocol or anything. It doesn't have to emulate that. It just can talk straight to the host system. It runs on your CPU, but it's a lot more efficient because it's a protocol that's meant to talk to a host rather than talk to actual hardware that it has to emulate. I feel like I'm very bad at explaining this. 
So let's just install Watcom. Uh, why is this looking so trashy? I swear, some of the color schemes in terminals. All right, let's try system theme, colors. Black on yellow, black on white, gray on black, solarized. It's setting the colors directly and it just looks awful. Uh, okay. Yes, we're going to use 16 bit compilers and we're going to support all the memory models. Uh, 32 bit, yeah, that's fine. Target operating systems, uh, DOS please. This is a very strange interface, by the way. You can't tell, but you have to tab through all this. You can't like use the arrows. You have to use tab. Okay. Host operating systems, Linux x86 32 bit, I guess. I mean, whatever. Toolkits. Runtime startup source code, yeah, why not? Chuck it in. I'm sure we can use up 43 megabytes of hard drive space on this. All right. Yeah, this, uh, this doesn't look good actually. This actually hurts to look at. Um, so black on white, same as text color. Um, white on black, there we go. <laughs> God, poor jigs. All right, so we have our Whatcom stuff here and it's remarkably like the DOS environment. So if we do, I think it should be Whatcom slash OW setup invent. Okay, so we have to source that. So let's also delete the installer. Did I delete two things by accident just now by holding down the key? No, I, di I didn't. What's this? Trash. Mouse, arrows, HJKL. In my time, we had tab and enter and we took man to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, add.config, we're not going to need that. What tcp.config, we don't need what tcp.config, but we'll dump it, just, we'll leave it there. So we're going to have to create a script that will uh, set up our environment, I guess. This is going to probably be a long stream because I feel like the setup is stealing time. So we're going to source whatcom slash OW set invent. And then we're going to, I guess, just be like that. Let's just add tmux too. So this will set up our little dev environment. Here we go. Do we have Whatcom? We don't, do we? Did Tmux just clear out? Okay, yeah, so that didn't work. You might have to leave in an hour or three. Yeah, it's fine. So, we're in the Whatcom build environment. Let's go to code and let's run wmake. Yeah, wmake. No targets specified. Make file. Packet.obj does not exist.
All right, we might have to soothe this a bit because I think that has to be dot obj there. Let's try. Oh, the packet dot obj should be dot cpp dot obj. So let's just name that c obj and a obj. Um, one of those is assembly, I think. Sobj, sobj. IP assembly is assembly. And we're going to delete dot a obj and we're going to delete dot c obj to clean. Okay, let's try this. All right, so it's becoming a little bit clear that uh, this doesn't want to really play nice. <laughs> so I'm wondering if this is actually a proper port to Linux. Or am I running, am I typing the wrong thing? Bot.com is not mentioned in any make file. There's a make file there. Is it case sensitive? Packet.obj does not exist and cannot be made from existing make files. Packet.cpp.obj. It does not exist. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. TCP CD, TCP ink, TCP lib. A little bit confused. Um, <coughs> not gonna lie, thought this would work. Unclear. Um, that's fine. Packet dot obj. Is this case sensitive? All right. Let's see, tcp lib, move packet, copy packet.obj, packet.cpp. It doesn't seem to be case sensitive. Hmm. It does not exist and cannot be made. How's my week been so far? Um, it's been okay. How's your week been so far? <coughs> so, target does not exist happens if I type like a random target name. Packet or option does not exist and cannot be made from existing files is what it says there. So it seems to understand that packet.obj is an actual thing. But it says it doesn't exist. Hmm. What if we change it in here? See. I'm a little bit confused. Let's search this up.
I don't think we're going to find. And the website is down. That's fine. So we're going to do the next best thing and grab the source code. And look at the issues. Perhaps I'm calling something wrong. Packet.obs does not exist. What if I copy it from TCB lib packet to here? Okay. Mm. Mm, okay. We have a lot more errors here. So what I'm suggesting is that we use Dothbox to compile stuff. Um, because I, mm, we just don't got time for this. So we're going to have another, we'll use the same DOS box. What the heck? We'll set it to 83, 86, whatever. That was fun, wasn't it? Trying to, <laughs> trying to set up what come on Linux. Wait. Home stream. Oh, public. So let's grab this again. Put this in code. Uh, we should just probably put that in drive C, huh? We've worked our way into a corner a little bit here. Um, let's just start reorganizing our files a little bit. There we go. Let's edit this. Did we have fun? Yeah. All right. So we have that. We have our code directory with our make file. So now we need the DOS version of open Whatcom. Uh, let's go back to open Whatcom version two. I think it was, if we go to the releases, we can then download this build or DOS. And I'm not going to be using the DOS text editor. I'm sorry. Absolutely not. We're going to be using Vim. Rude. This is my stream, buddy. Okay. So. I'm not going to go to google.com because I'm afraid it's going to dox me. I have learned fear over going to google.com. Right. Let's install this whatcom. See, DOSBox caches the file system in a weird way. Open Whatcom. Let's just name this Whatcom.exe. Whatcom. Whatcom.exe. Let's quit DOSBox and restart it. Whatcom. Yeah. C drive, Whatcom, selective installation. Yeah, we want the 16 bit compilers. We're not going to go with huge, uh, whatever. 98 megabytes needed. What is this installing? Did I get the thick version? Is DOS just thicker? 
What the heck? Help files to install. PDF help files, please. Um, okay. Next. Next. Now, this is going to take a while. So, we're going to do DOS CPU Turbo. I don't know if I brought it up. I was going to do a video about it, but I'm thinking of just returning them. But I bought some... Um, oops, turbo mode is still on. I bought some Type-C on-the-go adapters. So if we search up Type-C on-the-go adapters... Um, I bought these, these cheap things. Um, I would not recommend them. Uh, I bought three of them because I was planning on like tearing down one to see how it worked. But I got three of them. One of them works. One of them needs jiggling and then it only does USB 2. And the other one causes a short circuit and knocks out everything else on my USB bus. So I would not recommend these. <laughs> um, it's a little spooky, super dodgy. Yes, um, Type-C has some very tight tolerances. Let's see what we need to put in our config. Files equals 20. I don't know what that is. Auto exec. We're just going to dump this in our DOS box auto exec. There we go. So we're going to run it. Run, run, run. And let's go to bot. Code. Do W make and do turbo fast forward. All right, that doesn't help. Emulate CPU speed. This is a new option. Let's try emulating a Pentium. Let's try emulating, yeah. We'll just set it to run at a Pentium speed, I guess. Or I guess we'll just set it to auto. Max, there. So we have all this booting up. Um, let's try running the bot now. Unable to connect to host. I forget what the host is. Two point two socket. All right. So let's do a netcat on port 667. Hello there. Dropping long line. H, H, I, what's up? Dropping long line. Did I mess with the buffer site? Yes, I did. All right. So it can only go up to eight. What? 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 Oh, okay, it's only printing when it drops the line. Okay, www. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, good. We have the bot set up. Um, we also need a little IRC server set up. So, app install hex chat, I think. I think hex chat is fine. Is hex chat even still a thing? Yeah, and I think we used inspire CD before.
installation guide, configuration guide. Oh, we've got some example configurations. Use hex chat. That's pretty cool. I use IRSSI. <clears throat> um, so let's do hex uh, uh, chat. Yep. Um, I'm going to have to add our own network. Does this have Liberia yet? Yeah. All right. I'm going to call it localhost. And it's going to be on local, local host. If that helps. Um, password will be password, I guess. Very tight security here in the VM. I don't think anyone will be able to get in. Okay. Let's see how to install it using Ubuntu. Okay, configuration. There's some configurations located in user share doc in Spiracity. Um, let's see. In Spiracity.config.example. It wants me to read stuff. Okay. So we're just going to copy this. I'll read it in a second. Oh, there's already a config there. This is a more or less working one. Well, that should be fine for me. So let's uh, connect to localhost. Um, let's connect, join this channel, bot boy. Okay. There we go. So we have an ISC channel. Hot boy? No, bot boy. So now we have our bot. We're ready to code. One and a half hours in. So, well, the first thing we're going to do is just get it to print lines again. Uh, what's easier to read? If I use um, Vim here. Uh, or this. I think Vim, you think so? Should I put syntax highlighting on? I don't know. I don't like syntax highlighting. Uh, you know, we'll try Vim. We'll try it. So what's our line buffer going to be? Eight. So we have our connection and then it processes packets. Um, it supports pressing Alt X to quit. Um, and it appends it to the line buffer, each character. All right. What happens if the line buffer is full? Dropping long line. So I'm guessing that's just going to cut off the end of the line, like silently drop it. Handle line. What's send mind? So if it starts with an exclamation point, it'll send it back. But how about we just send line here? Regardless. Regardless. 
you don't like sy syntax highlighting or are you asking me? What happens when we don't have a transmit buffer? Hmm. We should probably print uh, no transmit buffer. Big sad. There we go. All right, let's run bot now. It's constantly dropping the long line. So we're gonna up the buffer from eight to 256. Uh, all text. Um. We're going to have to set the CPU to MMX, maybe, a second ago, faster. No syntax highlighting. Why not just code in Notepad? Um, because in 2011, I started to use Vim, and I'm stuck. So once you get good at using a certain text editor, it's stuck. You're never going to be able to use another one. That's why you shouldn't use proprietary text editors. Is this frozen? I hope not. Okay. We're going to run it again. And we're going to pin that to our launcher up here. There we go. CD code. W make. I get it. Oh, joke and GC compiler. What? Okay, so we have some, some stuff here. We have some lines. Um, what does it want us to do? <laughs> Looking up your host name. What does it want us to do now? We have our bot. Um, oh shit. That's printing the outgoing. Oops. We need to print the incoming as well for debug purposes. Um, so what we're going to do is after we get a line, going to handle the line. Oh, long lines are dropped. Okay. Um, so it looks like long lines. Okay. So I'm a bit confused about my code here. So it's going to append the line buffer with all the characters. And if we're at the end of it, it's going to drop the line. And if it's okay, so it's going to keep writing that. Um, so what we might do uh, is make that stateful perhaps. I'm not sure. Let's put it to do there. To do um, statefully um, drop long lines. There we go. Use gedit, the text editor, and you use GCC. Yep, I use GCC too. So when we get a line, we're going to print incoming and what's this data what is this data variable that we have is that a global variable 
Oh no. It's not. Alright, um... What's data? Line buffer. Okay. Um, line buffer, line pause. Send line. So we're probably going to have to move that to a file or something. We should probably be writing assembly at this point. Uh, shouldn't we? Let's, uh, let's get on that. So. What stuff do we not need to write in assembly? Uh, do we need to write in assembly? All of it, I guess. <laughs> We're going to need some inline assembly to wrap this first. So, um... Once we do this, we'll copy this and then we'll start writing assembly. Cause, uh, that's how it goes. Please, what did that not work? Why does that bring up? Oh, okay. I need to put the path here to the path. Let's see. So let's do W make. Let's do bot. It says incoming and outgoing. So that's our echo bot. And it's time to convert it to assembly. Um, fun, huh? So, we're going to write echo bot there, because that's going to be our little backup. No, we're going to change that to code C. All right, so this is where all the pain starts, I think. So, let's look at our code. Um, we're going to do a W make clean. So we have some C and C++ code here and we have some bot code here and we're going to have to translate this to assembly because why not, huh? Just this once, we're going to write assembly. Um, so let's um, change that to like bot or just ref. Um, I don't know how to get Whatcom to do assembly so let's just copy this file and see what it wants. Um, so let's do, let's edit the make file. Uh, bot.cpp. Oh, it might just be able to do that. Okay. W make. And let's open up our bot.assembly file. Let's junk all this. There's 8086. We're going to name this bot. Um, and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to do next. Um, I haven't written x86 assembly. Uh, I guess there's an end there. So, we're going to have to find the manual. Are we ready? Docs. C guide. Where's assembly guide? P guide. Is this it? Programmer's guide. It doesn't have an index. Okay. How do I spawn protected mode application? No. Is there an index of some kind? No. C guide. 
um, assembly. 16-bit assembly language considerations, page 125-ish. All right. So we're using the small model, uh, the tiny model. Um, let's see. Assembly language. It's telling us stuff about the types. It is not telling us the syntax though. Uh, what com assembler guide? Hopefully that gave us a big error. End directive at end of file. So we need to put end there. Okay, undefined symbol, stack, memset, rand. Okay, so we need a C. Um, I think we need to include some kind of C library. So what we're actually going to do is just, I'm not sure. Let's just go to the assembler. I think if we implement the C one, then it should be fine. Wasm. Wasm. We're looking for the Whatcom Wasm documentation. Whoop. No, not that. All right. This is a little, uh, <laughs> um, a bit of a fork in the road here. Um, perhaps Reddit will help. Or perhaps we'll just use NASM. You know what? We're going to use NASM. And have Whatcom link it in. Unless this is going to tell us how to use WASM. Okay, uh, docs. So it has documentation. Um, that's a plus for NASM. <laughs> Isn't it? All right, so NASM. I, I just went to their website before. So we're gonna use NASM and we're going to have to uh, have Whatcom do the main function or, mm, we'll see. I'm not sure how much of it we're going to wrap. I think if we go to code, if we go to bot.cpp, where did it go? Ref.cpp. Um, we're just going to comment out most of the stuff that doesn't call um, the TCP library. So if we go here, we have our socket and line stuff. We're going to set up the socket, clean up the socket. Um, we have send line, which calls stuff. Um, so we have a line buffer there and we have handle line. And then we have processing packets and stuff. So I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna give us some slack for now until we get set up. And we're just going to say, um, we can't really do set up socket in C, uh, in assembly. It's C++, I'm not gonna deal with that. Clean up, no. Send line, we should probably have this as send data as a C function. Handle line, append line, process packets. So we're going to have to 
change the idea of a line to um, what we're going to do is replace handle line. We're going to remove that implementation. And then we're going to replace it with one written in assembly. Uh, and then we're going to change the line stuff here to some kind of buffer stuff. So let's do W make, and we'll have to add in, can we link WASM and NASM? Uh, what come link NASM? looks bizarre. All right, let's download NASM for DOS. And there's some documentation there. It's fine, we can read it online. So we're just going to do a hello world first with NASM and then we'll see if we can kind of link it together. So NASM, we have NASM there. We'll have to add it to our path or our DOS box. So for handle line here, what we're going to do is well, we won't worry about that for now, but we'll have a function that like edits the line. Um, let's see. Set path. C drive. NASM. And that should give us some NASM stuff, right? NASM. Wasm. All right, so that doesn't, how do I use path? Let's do set, oh sorry, path, C drive, whatcom, bin W, C drive, NASM. And that should have W make, and it should have NASM. So let's do WMake and let us start a little program called, um, I guess, hello dot assembly. Um, and let's edit that and let's see what NASM needs us to do. So we're going to do, or was I using FASM before? I think I was using FASM before, the flat assembler. Should we use that instead? Probably not. So, NASM F DOS. Is it going to tell us what it can output? NASM help. NASM F DOS. Use HF filler list. Um, let's see, HF. So we're going to look here. Format. We're going to do. Flat raw, so F bin. Yep, let's do that. Nasm F bin, hello.assembly, and I guess the output name will be hello. Sick. What happens if we run hello? It's empty. Uh, it should be hello.com. Hello. 
that did surprisingly nothing. I was expecting it to crash. So now we need to write some DOS code. Um, anything else we need to write? Oh, it has macros and stuff. So we're going to quick start and the NASM language. Label, instruction, comments. Yep. Um, so we want to be able to put this at an offset. Um, NASM DOS. Programming bots. Yeah. Hey there, DPA. I'm, I'm back at this. It's, a, it's been a while. Yes, we need to do wow bot. We need to open it with Vim. And we're going to do um, org 1000H. So org puts it at an offset. Then we're going to just do return. And that should return us to DOS. Yep, that seems fine. Um, sick. I think we need to put a value on the stack. Um, push one. I don't think you should just return when your stack is empty like that. All right. Apparently you should. Oh, that's right. The return is the address. The the return pops it from a stack and jumps to it. So I just tried to jump to one. That's okay. So we need to make a function or a label. Uh, I should probably put section text, shouldn't I? Um, then we're going to do um, do nothing and it's just going to return. In fact, we're just going to make this um, the assembly include thing and we're going to do NASM HF more and we're going to look to see if it can do like a Whatcom thing. or bin object. Okay. If people liked an AA version, AI version of you better than you, would you be sad or would you enjoy the break from talking to so many people? I don't know. So let's do F obj hello.asm, hello.obj. Oh. Oh. And then let's link that to our bot using the make file. So let's see. Um, we're going to do hello.obj. And it's going to do nasm f obj hello dot assembly or hello dot obj and we're going to do hello dot obj that seems is fine oops so let's do w make um delete the hello file and see if it remakes it and does it link it it should so now let's try and call do nothing and see what happens. I don't know why I have my headphones on. Let's take them off. They warm my ears, but that's about it. So bot.cpp and we want to, oh, I've already got it open somewhere. 
Okay, so let's do... Do nothing. Do nothing has not been declared. Okay. So we need to learn how to export a symbol. So let's look up NASM. It has exporting symbols to other modules. Global main main. So global, okay. Yep, yep, yep. So we just have to set this as global, do nothing to just. It depends on the bonds with certain other people to me. If it was just nobody's, I wouldn't mind it. But if it's really good friends, I would. Yeah, that's fair. But if it's like an AI of you, why would they want to hang out with other people? So symbol do nothing has not been declared. Do I need to make it an extern? I might have to do that. In fact, that makes sense. Extern void do nothing void. There we go. So we just define that and that way Whatcom will know from the C side that we're looking for that. Undefined symbol do nothing underscore. Do nothing is an undefined reference. Um, do I have to name it do nothing? Is that a convention that there's just an underscore after stuff? Oh, I need to redo the NASM thing. DOSBox is not picking up that I've modified files. <gasps> it worked, I think. Um, and it's completely trashed everything. <laughs> okay, that's expected though. because I'm not respecting the calling convention. So let's search up DOS calling convention or x86 calling convention. I don't know. Um, oh, I didn't set the make file to um, update when the hello dot um, ASM file changes. That should help. So the calling convention is that um, when a function in a computer calls another function, it has to save its current data um, and then jump to the other function or the other way around. So it has to save its registers uh, to avoid interfering with everything. So if we have C decal, I'm not sure what calling convention we're using. Let's look at what con to quickly figure this out. So C guide convention. Oh, we can set the calling convention. Is it going to tell us what the default is? Set the default calling convention, and then we have those. So are we using any of those arguments for our make file? I 
I don't think so. Set default calling convention. What come default calling convention? Let's search this up and see what we get. Please just tell me what calling convention it is. Is it what call? Let's go to the start calling convention. What call is the default? Okay. So what is a what call? What does what call want us to do? The leftmost arguments are passed in registers. We don't have that. Uh, all registers must be preserved by the routine. Um, so does it push the address of the... I mean, if it uses call, then it probably does have ret, right? So why is this not working? Why is my code hanging? I guess we're going to have to open it with a debugger. So, W debug. I don't remember what the uh, Whatcom debugger is. Let's quickly search up Whatcom debug. The open Whatcom debugger. W. What's the debugger? I just want to know the file name of the debugger, please. Dr. Whatcom? Is it DRW? DRWC? What's the name of the debugger? Okay, user's guide. How do I do this? Introduction. How do I use it? I understand that there's a whole bunch of cool features and I just wanna be, <laughs> just wanna be, okay, starting it, WD. Okay, let's browse for our bot. <phone rings> Cannot read symbol value. So did we not? What do you mean it can't read the symbol value? What's happening? Did it freeze already? Okay. Not very helpful. What was that other debugger that we were using at the start? DOS debugger. Not debug, it's the... I mean, we have the free DOS debugger, but I don't want to use that. Fusion debug. Uh, break. This is just freezing up, I think. Um, F, control F. Pay my respects, please.
wadi wd let's just cancel this for now all right so it does have a little mouse but we're not going to do that we're just going to hit escape and do alt f break toggle view command options break on whatever it should be able to do this okay open browse bot.com could not read symbol I'm fairly certain it it is making symbols like did we not test this plus if you can't why are you doing this to me why are you freezing Okay. Yeah, we have D1 there. Um, let's look at the Whatcom. Preparing your program for debugging. God, this, this hurts to look at. D1. D2. Sim. Yeah, so it should have a sim file there. So let's go to desktop.bot drive C code bot.sim. Yeah, that should be it. What the hell? DOSBox is disrespectful. Don't, don't ever talk to me or my DOSBox again. Um, WD, well, it's out. How do we invoke this? Help, bot.com, um, bot.sim. Maybe that'll help. That just freezes. It just freezes. So we're going to use a different debugger. I forget what the name of it was. Free DOS debugger. We can use the DOS box debugger, but we'll have to do that if we can't find the debugger source. FDOS, free DOS files archive. Devel assembly. There's a lot of assemblers there. D for debug. No tools. Insight. That's what we want. Let's download this mint condition insight. Thanks for having the pocket menu be exactly the same thing as like the download arrow thing. Good UE design Firefox. So insight. And we'll just name this insight. And then we'll quickly see if insight is going to help us. Um, okay, load program, let's load bot.com, this isn't very helpful, uh, can we load symbols, no, alright, so this is not this is not helpful at all. Why is WD freezing? I guess we could just read the assembly. But I don't want to.
Uh, let's do this. Cannot read symbol value. We don't have the debugger? Okay. Um, perhaps DOSBox is going to give us some output. We can use a disassembler, can't we? That probably gives us symbols. We could probably just ignore that this thing isn't working. Here we go. So we're going to look for do nothing. So this is clean up socket, send line, it would be handle line. So it calls do nothing. Okay. And then what does do nothing do? I guess it does nothing, huh? If you can hear my cat snoring, I apologize. She not snores, but breathes. She breathes pretty loudly. Let's search up. Is this just because I have the CPU set to like something weird? I don't know. I don't understand completely why this is not working. All right, let's fire up the command prompt and have a look at the output. And what's happening? So enable the debugger. Uh, okay, just continue though. Oh boy, continue run maybe it's just taking a little bit maybe it's just taking a little bit let's give it a little bit uh, let's turbo it oh <gasps> no It failed. Let's try again. Something's really weirdly happening here. All right, just close it all. And we'll just run without the debugger. Uh, it's kind of insane how important this is, but let's, uh, uh, let's run this block.com. Cannot read symbol value, CPU turbo, and let's just wait a little bit. DOS 4GW error exception 00H divide by zero. So is what? Is what com broken? Oh. Oh. Okay. A little. Oh, it's not good.
just a tiny bit. Oh, I don't like that. Okay, well, let's keep calm. We just need to figure out the address of the thing to debug. So we can actually disassemble the final code here. So let's disassemble the bot. It's not in the, it's not in the elf on for cough format. I swear I had this working before. Lotcom sim files. What comms sim file command line? All right, so let's try this. What com bot dot sim bot dot com. Is it doing something? See, I don't think it's supposed to freeze like this. So could it just be a bug? Let's assume it's a bug and re reinstall Whatcom. Please let me in. Let me in. Maybe this is a beta thing. Oh, I don't know why I deleted the old DOS stuff thinking it would be easy to just set this back up. But, uh, I believe I was a coward and a fraud. Let's see, debugger. Any issues with the debugger? Debug. Okay, we're just gonna try try a new a new revision. A regular Ben Shapiro. Don't do that. Is there a release here? Does Open Whatcom even have Open Whatcom version two even have a release? It doesn't. This version. Of 1.9 from 15th September this year. So let's use that and we'll see how it goes. Whew. You know how it goes? It scares me that archive the little archive program can just open executables like that so we're going to name this whatcom we're going to delete the old whatcom directory we're going to probably delete insight if this works and let's just install whatcom okay i agree cgi whatcom No, 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 I wanted to customize that, I think. Yep, 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 yep. Don't care about 32 bit or stuff. I want the PDF help files. There. Okay. Here we go. Is it possible? If not probable, there's a value in cowardice.
cowardice, search for less risk prone situations, same as lazy, lazy people search for optimization. We make the world progress. Wait, are you a lazy or a coward? I don't need your config, sis. Fine, create the file. Yep. Yep, okay. You're both? Wow. Pathetic. Okay, where's our drive C thing? Are these... Yeah, these look different, I think. Does include whatcom ed pass? There's no win help. And I think they're the same. Yep. We should put pass there. And then remove the auto exit. Bully stream? Oh, no bully stream. I was about, I was ready to bully everyone. I was about thinking W make J4 and I was like, wait, this isn't a multi-core system. Okay. Are we set everyone? Is this, is this it? Good night, Death Duty. Thanks for dropping by. I don't want to bully you a little. I want to bully you a lot. Okay. So, W... Oops. Still got the CP going fast. So, this is... Will this work? Oh! <gasps> Struth, we've done it again, mate. Okay. So we're gonna break over at handle line. We're gonna break over here. Okay, so that's not the button I wanted to press. Handle line, we're gonna break at the do nothing, which should be F5. Nope. That was the wrong button. I don't know why I keep forgetting buttons. If we do wdbot.com, will it find the symbols? Yeah. So let's go up and let's handle line and control B, alt B. Toggle is F9. Yep, and we want to also view um, code eight assembly. There we go. Where did I break? I guess we'll break here. Oh no, we're breaking. Yeah, okay. So we run F5 to continue. And here we are. Do we have our registers? Okay. I hope you've all got a pen and paper. <laughs> Let's view the stack as well. Can we view the stack? It's modules. Window. Locals. No, it would be CPU registers. I would like to see the stack. There we go. Um, I would like to resize the window, but that's okay. So we're going to start looking at this and see why is it freezing? So it has 
pushed it's added this um okay well i think we kind of see what's happening here already just from looking at the stack so the stack is currently the stack pointer is c1d6 which is 0ba7 and that's the point that it's going to jump back um, dot f we want to jump back to b62 so is it putting that in the a register for us How are we supposed to know where to jump back? Maybe the call instruction would put on the stack. Okay, so let's uh, run. We're going to step it. I don't want to step over. I don't want to resume it. I want to step. Action. Step. How do you step? Trace into F8. And we've jumped to here. Um, I don't know where we are. Uh, Hmm. 8 FDB. So I don't think that's where. Let's look at our memory map. Bot dot map. So we would want to see that do nothing is at 8 FD000B. It's not helpful. I need to know the final map. Okay, well, 8FD00B. We're at 8FDB. What the heck is happening here? The open what comma assembler. Let's just see. Maybe we should use Wasm. Wasm assembler wiki. Maybe there's a documentation for it. Can we just grep Wasm here? Doesn't seem like it. Maybe there's some DOS help. Um, H for help. Wasm. No, that's headers. Wasm. Wasm. There's no help for Wasm. I don't think. Oh, this is fantastic. Read me. Cool. I'm on my own. I don't want to be on my own. Okay, so 
we've jumped to 8FDB and uh, as far as I know Oh, it should be X. I should be pressing X. But uh, we don't want to be here, do we? Or it's running connect. It's running handle line and a user interrupt was detected. Okay, well, we're going to have to exit this and then try again. Let's look at the assembly and we're going to jump on over to do nothing. No, it's not in cleanup. It should be in handle. Yeah, so we jump do nothing near pointer 8FDB. Okay. Oops, I didn't put a breakpoint. F9. Uh, and we jump there. And then we're going to do X. Then we're going to call and we're going to view the registers because I don't have them open. And we're also going to view the stack. Okay. Stack pointer is C1D6, which says BA7. And... It added six to the stack pointer. Why would it do that? Why would it just add six to the stack pointer? Why would it do this? I don't understand. Mm. Okay, I'm not going to be upset or anything. Okay, next instruction. And we are at Freeze Land. Freeze land, not Queensland. Um, but this is unhelpful. Let's search up Whatcom's calling convention. Maybe it will help us. So let's see. Returns EAX. I already have stuff in EAX though, don't I? I have no idea what this this means, but it probably means something important. Um, unclear. Let's search up 8086 call instruction, and then we can maybe see what's happening. Do we need to add like a knob or something? <laughs> Would that help? Um, delete the code C thing there. 
Hey, love PG. What's up? How you doing? This is me being a boomer trying to program something. I'm doing okay. Okay, let's do... Let us break here um, and then jump there. Then let's view our CPU registers and let's look at our code here. So do nothing is just going to add six to the stack pointer. So we probably need to look at our stack again. Wait, adding six to the stack pointer, the stack grows down. I think. Huh? Wait. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting confused. Okay, so we're running ret. So what does the call and ret instruction do? Because I feel like I'm trying to return a value and it's not prepared for this. So let's look at our data. Stack. So the stack grows down, which is why I was a bit confused. So we've gone down, then when we call, it's going to jump to 8FDB. So let's do that. Um, what? That's not helpful at all. Why? So we need to figure out how to step this by a single assembly instructions. Um, so here we go, F9, F5, um, run, next sequential address. So that's not gonna work here, that's a jump. Until return, trace into. So we jump to 8FDB and 8FDB does not actually have our code, which is a problem. Um, where is our code? Where's our code? What the heck? It's not putting the code in the... Look at this. All right, I get it now. It's linking our code into... somewhere else in memory entirely. Not within our module. What the heck, Watcom? Why? 8FD... 8FD... What the heck? What? Hmm. Okay, so section text, global do nothing. So we have do nothing that does a not and a ret. So, NASA makes an object file. Oh, 
Oops. Let's open DOSBox again and let's try dumping some object files. What actual Whatcom programs do we have here? Um, C tags, a lot of Whatcom stuff. Dump object. So it does seem to have actual code there. Netwide assembler names segment has one segment byte public use segment one and we have it's interesting to you how so uh because this is confusing as a heck to me I wish there was more documentation, but I don't know why I chose to do this. Um, Boomer cue ball brain? What's cue ball? It, it looks confusing and that's because it is confusing. Um, all this stuff is from the 90s and It's all forgotten, I get, what did I just do? No, no, no. Um, so, like all important things we're going to do, we're going to read the manual because, like, what the hell? It has no reason to do what it's supposed to be doing. I mean, what it does do. So let's open up the PDF for the linker. L guide. Was this an actual book at some point? Okay. Linking 16-bit executable files. All right. Wait, I should be looking at an object file, shouldn't I? Um, let's look at this. Where is it? Does it say, does it have any linking location stuff? It's got comments. It has segment definitions. It has offsets. Who would have thought computers would be so hard? Group definition, external definition, public definition, LE data. I'm just guessing at what any of these means. This doesn't mean anything. This means nothing to me. Okay. So the following objects types are supported. It doesn't tell me which one I'm using, but that's okay. All right. W link. That's what we're using. So that's how you set the computer program. Linking 16-bit x86 DOS executable files, DOS-COM files, page 183. So we'll have to check that out. And we're gonna skip this. Linker directives. Alias names, alignment, area so if we go back to our bot and we look in code and we go to bot.map 
And once again, I'm asking you not to do this, but... Is it because I'm not specifying that it's part of the D group? D group code, segment text. So do I have to, is it because I'm specifying the wrong segment? Am I having a good day? Um, I don't know what I expected today. Um, I thought I just, I forgot. <laughs> I thought we'd do some simple programming and then I forgot I'm not prepared at all. All right. What if we do section text like that? And we do W make. Is that going to fix our issue? Section text, ah, underscore text. section underscore text and let's do w make and let's do bot dot map reload it still does nothing um okay but we know the issue is probably with the segment thing so what is a what is a d group tell me what a d group is the DOS seg option. So it orders them a certain way. Um, so I guess we have to tell we have to get uh, NASM to do the correct sections. So let's go to index um, no, not index, index, contents. All right. So we're going to look for, um, expressions, seg. No, that's not it. Um, the preprocessor, standard macros. Section alignment, assembler directives, sections. Is this it? Section dot text. Okay, so let's look at our code, which I've I've lost. I've lost my code. Section text there. So we're going to open this with Vim. So section there, section dot text. So do I need to change it to dot text? Let's just indent this properly so I don't get annoyed at this. Okay, so let's W make this and let's see if it gets mapped in the right place. It does not, it creates this section named text. So let's see. So the object format does not recognize these section names as being special and will strip off the dot. All right, so what if we just do section text? W make. No, because it still has a group and a class. Um. D group. Oh. 
class. B group class. Let's Google this. Duck, duck, go it. First Baptist Church. Um, object D group class. Um, looks like there's nothing online about this on DuckDuckGo. Default data segment defined by the group D group. A D group starting address of 80 is required. Let's look at the addresses. Maybe. Why is it setting the address at 8FD? Is that because it's mapping it there? I think so. So segment class group. Do we need to change the... Yes, when you search stuff on the internet, especially old stuff, it's going to end up having a lot of weird stuff. Oh my God, is this it? Segment alias class. So do we put code? Does this even do anything? Doesn't do anything. And it should be an underscore, shouldn't it? Underscore text code. Wait. All that code is being linked already. Module, 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 module. Ooh. 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 Wait a second. I remember being vaguely smart. Um, is it because I haven't set the memory model? Is that it? Memory model, model, tiny. Contents, memory model. NASM doesn't support memory models. Okay. All right. What does that mean? Be truthful, you love the weird tech stuff. Yeah, I do. Interfacing to 16-bit C programs. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we have extent. Segment underscore data. Should I not be adding a segment header? I haven't tried that. I was never smart. I was just not aware of the full extent of my ignorance. Embrace ignorance. Be born in it. Molded in it. Yeah, that's fair. No, why are you going there? Nazim Defseg. Ooh. 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 Okay. Well. <laughs> wow. Great. Fantastic. Let's look at the IP assembly code. Maybe we can find some hints. 8086, model small, code. Should it be section code? Should that be it? Mm. 
Nope. No, that's not it. That's fine. That's fine. This is all fine. Um... Hmm. Okay. Linking NASM with Whatcom. Maybe there's a guide on this. Yes, I'll accept your cookies. Nom 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 nom. Do I dare Google this? Hang on a second. Let's search this up in another browser. Um, NASM Whatcom Linker. I'm just Googling some stuff here. All right, so I found some random stuff. Um, segment text public class equals code. Why do I have RuneScape open? Just the web page. Segment text public class equals code. Is that what it looks like? Okay, let's compile this. All right, does that help? No, yes. Yes, it kind of. Class equals code, group equals D group. What if I do that? Will that help? We're getting there, so it kind of seems like they're similar. <gasps> look, look, look at this, this person helped me, they saved the day, you have to do segment public class, do you need the public, segment, segment class, Segment. Where is it? Segment. And what if we do segment class? Calculate your climate impact. No, we should be searching NASM for this. Let's use the index. Segment. Section 7.3. So that doesn't give me much to go on there. But luckily the internet is full of trash and it has helped. Does this mean our bot can now run? It work. It work, everyone. It uh, it does nothing, but it work. So let's get back to our bot coding adventure. Quick two hour aside over. What's public do? What if I remove public? Does that ha does that ruin my chances of this working? No, it doesn't. Okay, so we'll just do that. 
So, next up, we have to replace the do nothing. Let's try and make it with, uh, let's have it print the line buffer. So, should we make a DOS call for this? Um, what other segments do we actually need? Uh, segment data. All right. Did that have an underscore in front of it? Bot dot map. So there's text and there's underscore data. So we need to also use extern to get that line buffer. Extern printf and extern line buffer. We're not going to mess with C stuff. So let's do extern line buffer so we have our line buffer there and we're going to find the dos print interrupt Uh, print console input output. No, we want to write a string. Write character to std out. Write string to std out. So let's see. We want to move. Um, Yes, um, DX. Move a H zero nine H or is it zero X zero nine? Um, then we want to do int 21 H And we are going to have our line buffer. We need to write some text. So, um, hello world shall be here. Um, and then we need to have a string, character strings, and we're just using db for that, I think, db hello world, I think that works. Then we're going to move strings. Mov declaring initialized data. So we have hello world, and then we have that. DB, what is DB? DB, DW. So, not clear what DB or DW is. This manual is not that comprehensive. Double byte, double word, double double. with one or more byte values. So I guess double word would be more word values. So let's find the mov.
instruction operands. So we want to move something into the data registers, which is DSDX. So move DS, move DX. Is this even the right? Handedness. It might be around the other way. Move destination source. This is a little program, isn't it? So we can just do move DX, hello world. Okay, let's see if that compiles. It compiled. Ah. Was that just making really loud noises? If it was, I'm sorry. I had my headphones off. Um. No, mute. So that did not work well. It tried to print something. So time to open up the debugger. All oh, right. Um, I have the audio for desktop all the way down. I guess you can print, you can make it do noises if you print, I don't know. I guess you can make it do noises if it, uh, if you print certain text to the screen. Okay, let's break. Um, let's go to, this wouldn't happen if you just wrote it in Rust. Oh, I'm, do nothing, do nothing. How do I exit this window? I don't want the search window. Um, is it really do nothing? Did I name it something else? How do I exit this search when window? Help me out. Leave. Exit. Do I have to quit? Do I have to close this program because I can't get out of this window? Why? Search code source. All right, whatever. Let's find what it's called. Do nothing. So you want to do code functions. Do nothing. Then we want to do that and we want to go to it. I think that breaks it. All right, so we're at do nothing. Just unplug the monitor, then it goes away. So it's moving the variable to a there. Um, so DX is to a DS. Shit. Am I thinking of DS and DX wrong? No, DS is the data segment and DS is 2A. That doesn't seem right, does it? Let's see. No, that's very, that's like very far away. Um, what the hell? Do I need to do like relocations for it? 
where did it end up? Where did my, where did my string end up? Can quit in Vim, can't quit in DOSBox. Uh, bruh, where's my, where's my string? Is it in there? It matches, so it should be in there. Hello world. Um, so it's trying to move it to 2A, which is not where it is. Um, it's probably like somewhere in the, in, uh, not the interrupt table, somewhere like the program header. Um, Where is it? Uh, do we have a program that will let us dump it? Ah, uh, it just froze. Sometimes DOSBox does that. We're going to dump bot.com. Uh, we want to disassemble bot.com. I'm just going to use hex dump. I'm just going to use hex dump. So it is at eight F zero zero. That's not where it was before. What's up with that? Oh shit. What's 2A in ASCII? Is it H? No, it's a star. What is H in ASCII? 48. Maybe I'm not like dereferencing it as a pointer. Intel assembly move string pointer, move string address. We don't have pointers in assembly. Didn't I make a hello world on my DOS box, DOS bot thing? All right, so it's a byte. That's way too much detail. I just want... So I've put hello world there. I've told it to move hello world there. Um, but it has decided it is not going to put hello world there. So let's kind of follow the, the line of thinking here. It seems like to me that it's not relocating, which is fine. Um, relocation.
Let's see. If you define a segment, NASM defines that segment name as a symbol as well, so that you can access the segment address of the segment. Okay. Um, My mouth is agape right now, but I'm not sure if the, are we supposed to do it this way? Hang on. Um, push DS, pop DS. Are we supposed to move the data segment here from this program into the register there? As a temporary override? I don't think so. Oh. Oh, here we go. Here's actually the documentation for the segment stuff, so we might as well read that. Okay, segment. Wait, we're writing section, not segment. Oh, okay. So let's do segment code. Private public common stack. So public um, class code group equals D group. And I guess we're going to do segment data, public class equals data. Let's just see if this messes everything up. I mean, not very wise of me to just mess it up now, but why not? That didn't work. Symbol data not defined. Okay, so that's not working. What if I put... What if I start putting random stuff there? Would that help? Like, I put in a dollar sign. Does, does having a dollar sign help? Okay, so the section thing isn't helping. Um, hello world dollar sign. What if the dollar sign goes at the end? Hello world not defined. But then if I put the dollar sign at the start, are we cooking now? So now if we run the bot, no, um, no, it doesn't. It doesn't do anything. x86 variable dollar sign. Who would have thought this would be so hard? Let's just search up DOS hello world assembly. I made dwarf fortress. Oh, please no. All right. Message DB. Yep, so message. I've made my message hello world here. Um, hello world. Why do we have that junk at the end? I don't know. Move DX hello world. What if I, no. What if I just remove the section there, thing there and we just dump we dump our variables into the code. That could work. Yep, 
Yeah, that works. All right. So the issue here is that the seg the segment is being relocated. That's not the issue. All right, let's disassemble this thing again. Let's open up. So this is with it working, I think. Yeah. So let's go to functions, do nothing, address, do nothing. Okay, let's break there, I guess. And we'll look at what's happened. So it moves D10 there. But then if I put it in data, it moves something else. Hmm. Hmm. Let's look at the uh, object file. So what do we have here in our assembly file? We have code. So BA08, B409, CD21. Let's just, let's disassemble that. So do nothing, offset L segment one, wait, right, offset L one. Okay. So that makes sense, doesn't it? It's, it says that that's an offset L segment one, I think. It makes sense to me. Did it just freeze? That doesn't make sense to me. So let's try adding it into the data segment. No, that's the wrong one. Um, it's hello.obj. Offset one. I mean, that looks like it should work. Segment data byte U16 zero zero E bytes. So is the segment wrong? Let's have a look at the segments that this has. Const byte Yeah, that seems like like that is a segment there. Text byte U sixteen data Is data the wrong thing here? Is data... That's not BSS, but data seems like it's the variables. So I guess text is read-only stuff. Um, let's search up what DOS data segment means. Initialize static variables. 
All right, so we're just going to not use the data segment there because it turns out it doesn't make sense. And we have a hello world thing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get our line buffer and our line position. And we're going to print it using DOS somehow. Um, which is a bit of a headache, but okay. Line pause, line pause is, I believe, the place where the new line is. Yeah, it's, I think it's zero terminated. Maybe? Yeah, so line pause would be like, okay, line buffer plus line pause equals the address. Wait, no, line pause is the address. All right, so we just want to set line pause to uh, the dollar. Then we're going to move the line buffer to the data segment, the data address, and then print it. And then we set it back to um, Yeah, this seems fine. So is that how you actually move stuff there? So I've got it to overwrite the line position data with a dollar sign, then a zero. Um, and we still haven't put incoming or anything, but hopefully this will be a good start. What are you doing over there, cat? Operation size not specified. Um, okay. So it wants us to specify. Okay. We're on X86 and move can mean everything, can't it? Move S. X, move B, it could be move B, move B. No, move B isn't a real thing. Um, this is painful. I just want everyone to know this is painful. How do I move? <laughs> How do I do this? Please. How do I use the move instruction? I need to specify, um, this is an arm. Don't give me something sane like arm. All right. Uh, what is this table? No. CS eight. No, that's offsets. I need to tell you how big, um, how big this is. Okay. Index move contents pseudo instructions. Character strings. Um, instruction list. Instruction list. Do we have this? Is it?
Log. Oh, you're not telling me anything helpful. There's too many instructions. 8086. Um, 8086, move literal. Move byte. Okay. I was close. Undefined symbol, line buff, line pause, and line buffer. So that means in the bot code, we will have to define that as a global. Huh? Line pause, line buff. Huh? How do I make this public? Um, extend C. Do I need to? Okay, C define uh, external variable. Global variables, is this why global variable is bad? Undefined symbol, line pause, and line buff. Um, is that because that's not the name of them? It's mangled because it's C++ and C++ gonna mangle. Let's see if that's true. No, so what symbols do we have? Line buff. There's an underscore. Why is there an underscore? I don't want an underscore. Line pause, line buffer, line pause. Why did I delete that stuff? Where's the bot code? Oh, great. Let's W make this again and see if it works. Please. Okay, I bet now it got mangled because I didn't extern. Yeah. Because I didn't extern see it. Oops. I'm too used to writing code in regular Linux. Why is my microphone so quiet? Oh, it works, I think. Oh, no, it did not work. Maybe it did work. It's unclear what's happened there. Okay. 
let us continue our journey by opening up the debugger, which is going to be a theme. Let's find um, code functions global. Sorry, do nothing. Break at that. No, please break. It's not space. Enter. All right, breakpoint. Yep, this is what I want. Um, and close this window. Or we just do F5. All right, so what are we doing here? What do we got here? All right, so move byte pointer. 24 to 9920. So let's look at our data. Um, memory at 9020. I'm not dereferencing it, am I? I've made, I've made the, uh, smooth brain, um, <laughs> the very smooth brain, um, the, the classic don't, I didn't double dereference. Can I double dereference? Will that work? Okay, excess brackets. So what do we have here? Double deals. No, this should be working. What the heck? Oh, yeah, okay. I didn't put the brackets there, did I? I don't think. Maybe that'll fix it. I thought I had to double dereference it for some reason. All right, but um, close, closer. It's getting closer. I think. Um. Hmm. What if we... Hmm. So line buffer is the address of the line buffer. So if we do this and that should just kind of... I don't know, print nothing. Nope, same thing. Okay. So let's do W disassemble. Um, let's actually fix that. So it should be like that. Let's W make it. Um, and let's look at a hello object again. Oops, it should be W dis. All right, so it's gonna byte pointer, word pointer. Huh? Word pointer. So should I be using pointer instead of the brackets. Hmm. Let's search this up. Move byte pointer.
So we want to move. So the first one seems right. So does the line pause one, but line buffer isn't a pointer, is it? What am I doing? That's why I didn't have it there. So let's see, will this help? Uh, what? No, kind of, we don't actually know if it's, let's cheat. So we're gonna go here and we'll do line buffer, wait, no, line pause equals that. And we'll try doing, we'll try having the C code format the string for us, since obviously I can't be trusted to do that. Okay, but, oh, that works. So that's cool. What if we're gonna do, what if we say uh, incoming text? So we have our incoming there. We don't print it from C, but we do set the line position to be terminated by um, that thing. I don't know how to do comments. Um, how do you do comments in assembly? I think it's double dash. Ah, it's the um, semicolon. So let's see how this works. So it's not printing the incoming text. So is do nothing not printing? Huh? Why are you not printing incoming? Maybe because it's not buffered properly? What? Huh? So this should only print the text incoming. Okay. So the line buffer, that should also print, it should also print the line buffer. I think. So let's close DOS box again. Open it back up. And see if it prints the incoming. No, so if I, mm. Why? Why, what is happening here? What if I set it to print incoming here? Maybe I'm confused about what is happening.
Maybe I do need to dereference it. Ah. Uh. That doesn't help. Just add another incoming thing. Just make sure that calling it twice is not the issue. So we can write as many incomings as we want, but if we write the line buffer, um, it does not want to print it. So let's open up our thing again. Oh boy. Um, so what we're going to do is, I guess, oops. Well, there it goes. We're going to debug and try and find where this is going wrong. So we're going to load up the debugger. We're going to get used to its strange controls. Um, and we're going to break at do nothing. And we're going to go. All right, let's step in. So what do we have here? That's fine. Let's step, step, step. Incoming prints. What's that AC28? Whoa. Did that just print it? Oh. I'm an idiot. I'm an actual. I can't. I, why am I doing this? I didn't put a line ending on it. Let's just do this really dirty hack. Um, what's zero A, I think. What's the our LF? Carriage return is zero D. Zero A. And then let's just jam that into, I mean, it's not ideal to be having a DOS system call just straight up doing three interrupts to print a single line of text, but it's fine, we're learning. So now it should work. Yeah. Yeah, it works. Kind of. We still, uh, we still don't quite understand how to change a character in the text. So let's try and set it so that we set uh, a buffer. Let's set the first character to an A. Uh, of line buffer. That seems reasonable. And we will W make that. Invalid combination of opcode and operands. Move byte line buffer A. Do I need to dereference it? Or maybe I shouldn't be dereferencing it, but I should be putting byte A there. 
No. Is it able to just detect that it's a single character? Hmm. I guess we'll just do byte pointer. Oh boy, it's like learning C all over again, but worse. Invalid combination of opcode and operands. It might actually be that. You don't love, I don't love this. It's fun. I did it. But this also means I misunderstood how um, a hack, a fraud, a regular Ben Shapiro. Um, this also means I don't quite, I didn't understand exactly how the move byte pointer thing here. It turns out it's not actually dereferencing it. So that means we should be doing something like move um, we should probably be pushing all this stuff we're overriding. Push DX, push AX. Um, pop EX, pop AX. That seems fair. And then we're going to move, um, we're going to move uh, line pause into AX at uh, the, um, we're going to move the pointer of line pause into AX. And then we're going to move um, a byte to the pointer of AX. So it's getting a little bit complicated now. That's fine. Invalid effective address. Oh, I have to specify the segment, don't I? Maybe? Um, it'd be in code segment. Maybe. Invalid effective address. So let's just see, is it on the AX thing? Symbol EX not defined. That should be DX. So we can't move a byte to AX like that, can we? Why not? I should be able to. Invalid effective address. Let's search up x86 assembly. I think we're using the Intel assembly thing. Um, move EX, EBX. I don't have the extended ones though. Byte pointer. So should I put pointer there? Would that help? Pointer is not a NASM keyword. All right. So move. So I've moved the value at line position into AX. 
which is an address. So I should probably put like um, word there. I guess it's implied. Um, and then we're going to put a byte into AX there, but it says invalid effective address. It's because we're not using a uh, address register, isn't it? Ha ha ha. Ah. You can't just use AX for stuff, can you? No, that wasn't the issue. Maybe it's got to be CX. Let's just focus on fixing the first one now. Invalid effective address. What is an effective address? This, this answer gives me more questions than I, uh, Then I started off with load effective address. Computes the effective address of the second operand and stores it. So so I have to use load effective address for this. Is that what it's saying? So I can't just move stuff. I mean, I guess I can with... What? Huh? Oh. You have to put a CS there. No, no, that's not it. Of course not. Hmm. So we've loaded oh the a pointer from CX, from the line position. We've loaded the address at line position that it stores there, which is a pointer, into CX. And now we want to move a byte to CX there. And we need to somehow make an effective address. Do I need to add like plus zero to it? Hmm. Oh, I have to combine it like, okay, it's, is, hmm. So I don't do, do I do CS plus CX? Comma, decorator, end of line. So, not a plus zero there. And it's still an invalid effective address. It's not telling me what an effective address is. 
So let's read this article. The following instruction moves into AX the word value found in DSBX. Okay. DSBX. That's fine. We're in the tiny memory model. Um, DSBX there. We have, we're using the same DS. So if we go here, line pause, that would actually be in DS. Um, okay. And you can add them together. That's a bit strange. Multiple address displacements. So I want to know how to store something using the mob instruction. God, all this. This might actually be hell. Okay. So move DX. Do I need to dereference? No, I do have to dereference it because otherwise it's going to overwrite the register. So you can specify the segment register and it's going to be DS by default. Okay. So DX. So it's not symmetrical. Register indirect to access data. Register as a pointer. Is it because it's a string thing? So I move DX. But do I specify if it's a byte or not? Let's not do that. Let's not specify that it's a byte. Okay, I have to specify that it's a byte for the operation. Invalid effective address. What does this mean? This looks kind of like what I want to do. Move byte pointer CS DX zero. 
Do I have to store something in a register first? Maybe that's what's wrong. Let's just put AX in it. Byte AX, or is it a AL for um, a, a low? Still an invalid effective address. That's fine. That's more than fine, actually. That That's exactly what I want. So, what am I working now on? Well, I've managed to load a value from memory, memory into DX. And now I would like to store the address. I want to store a value there at a memory address. Did that just do something? That might have done something. I'm not sure if that worked. Or if so, why it worked. Let's try again. No, I don't believe that worked. Is there any actual x86 assembly guides? Wikipedia has an instruction reference. We have mob. Let's search up mob instruction. Let's try and dive deep into this. Maybe I'm just shooting in the dark here and I need to thoroughly understand what's actually happening. So, move. There's different opcodes and instructions. Encoding. I don't quite understand the encoding. Copy is the second operand of the source to the first. Source can be an immediate, general purpose segment or memory location. Destination can be a register, segment, register, or memory location. Both operands must be the same size. So have I been clear about that? No, invalid effective address. So something strange is happening here. I'm not specifying a memory address properly. If the destination operation operand is a segment register, the source operand must be a valid segment selector. So the destination is not a segment register. So let's see what the logic of it is. Okay, that's a bit low level. That talks about descriptor tables and stuff. So let's move on to the next tutorial. Source is the address of a word. Um, is this x86? No. Plus 
please. This seems like it could be helpful. Is this... That's NASM. NASM assembly. Tutorials point. Okay. Register addressing. Immediate addressing. Alright, so that's when there's actually a value. So that's pretty cool. Direct memory addressing. Oops. When operands are specified in memory addressing mode, Direct access to main memory, usually to the data segment, is required. This way of addressing results in slower processing of data. Oh, all the ads just loaded. Okay. Um, bit rate's probably going to go up because of that. Uh, operands are specified in memory addressing mode. Uh, I'm trying to pass. This is so distracting having all these ads around. Please. Okay. Operands are specified in memory addressing mode. Direct access to the main memory, usually the data segment, is required. To locate the exact location of data in memory, we need the segment start address, which is temporarily found in the DS register, and an offset value. This offset value is called the effective address. In direct addressing, the offset value is specified directly as part of the instruction, usually indicated by variable name. Calculates the offset value maintains a symbol table. Okay. I don't think that's what we, we're doing though. Um, indirect uses, okay, that seems like what we're trying to do. So we put the effective address into EBX or AX MOV register register memory. Invalid effective address. See, this is all extended 32-bit stuff. Yes, you can go outside, cat. So this isn't that helpful. So let's search up uh, effective address in the NASM thing. Okay. NASM invalid effective address. So let's see. This person seems to have the same issue as I do. Valid 16 bit addresses consist of an optional offset, optional base register, and an optional index register. That's it. SP is not on the list. All right. That makes sense. We don't have general purpose registers, do we? <laughs> All right. Is this going to work? <gasps> that actually worked. We did it, Reddit. 
We did it. We've discovered some hell. Um, my brain is was too smooth to comprehend that there's only one register you can use for pointers. I did it. This is so horrible. This is not how modern computers work. This is not how any computers work. What is this even? If you release thousands of black ants in my studio, would I be happy? No. I don't want... I was bitten by red ants as a kid and I felt like I like couldn't walk for a few days. Like I just couldn't run. I mean, I could walk. I did it, love PG. I'm a hero. No need to thank me. Okay. So, what am I using DX for? All right, DX, BX, AX. Is that Patrick dabbing? So what are we doing here? Let's just check the original code. Let's remove that. Okay, so I am successfully terminating the string. Um, and we have made it so this code prints text. It does it. It did it. It's done. Um, a little bit pathetic, but okay. Um, I think that might be it for the stream today. I think this is way too long and it's way too difficult, but I will keep going. Yes, subscribe. No, not subscribe. Well, sub. I don't know. Is this YouTube? Is it subbing or following or whatever? Follow Love PG. She does cool streams. I think I'm following you. Yeah. 18 days ago is your last stream. Why are you not streaming? You probably have, like, real life stuff to do. Okay, so... Dressed with school. Yeah, I get that, kind of. Not anymore. I don't. I'm out of it. Let's look up the 8086 architecture while we chat. And let's look at these registers. So we have four registers. Why do we have so little registers? Why did I decide to do this? Uh, this is horrible. Too big brain for school? No. Nah. Oh, this hurts my head. Okay, so we have a primary accumulator. These are none of these are general purpose. I hate this. I hate this so much. Stack pointer, can't use that. Source index. I don't know what that's for. 
probably nothing useful. Um, base pointer. Destination index is probably, I think source and destination are used for, um, copying stuff. Can you just make a bot that can be run on DOSBox? No other constraints? No, I have to do this. I have to do this. Oh, this is actually a pretty good table. Um, so we have some data registers, segment address registers, pointers. We have one pointer. We have one pointer and data registers. Great. Wait. BX. No, BX is here. Okay, so BX is the one pointer. And I think it's... <laughs> I know this isn't intended to be funny, but when your second slide is like overview, preliminary into the information, how to find help. This isn't, this is spooky. Yeah, so basic stuff. x86 won't die. Uh, okay. <laughs> Don't optimize your code. I will have to read your code. Um, yeah, I figure that's Same subset of x86. So let's search up um, x86 16-bit instructions. Let's kind of get a feel for what we have. Original ones. Uh, we don't need that. Don't need that. Add with carry, probably. Call procedure. Clear flags, compare operands, um, halt, sign to divide, sign to multiply, input from port, call to interrupt, load effective address. What does that mean? Load pointer using DS. So we have some load instructions here. Uh, we have load string byte, which just copies a string thing. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening right there. No operation, logical or. Shift, shift, shift. We got some shifts. I have some more stuff in in the 186. That's pretty cool, I guess. We have push A and pop A. That's pretty cool. That would be nice to use. With 286, you get some some extra stuff. And then 386 is, that's, we, we don't get to have those nice things. God. Uh. 
addressing modes, caveats, absolute or direct, PC relative, registering direct, effective. There's a lot of addressing modes, um, but let's look at what this load effective stuff is. Load ES with pointer, load pointer using DS. So let's search up x86 LDS. What does LDS do? Loads a far pointer. Loads DS R16 with a far pointer from memory. So that would be loading a full pointer. I guess LS is there. So those are for far pointers. We're not using those. Um, LEA. Let's see what LEA does. That's the 32 bit. That's not for real mode. Eighty eighty six LEA. So load effective address is meant to calculate addresses. So why would you want that? Also like hands up at how insane that is that you can just ask it to do that instruction where it's like move EDX EBX plus eight times EAX plus four. So Okay, so <laughs> wouldn't it be cleaner to extend the move instruction? Let's go back in time. Doing math in a mob instruction isn't valid. True. Um, that's valid because it's an addressing mode. So we should probably look at addressing mode. Addressing modes for 16 bit processes can be summarized by the following formula. CS, DS, SS, ES. So a segment. And then BX. That's a array. Uh, My head's hurting a little bit, but I'm going to try and galaxy brain this really hard. So. Is it that I can choose either BX or BP there? Plus SI or DI. So does this mean all of these are pointers? So what about DI? Can I just use, say, DI? Um, where's BX? DI. Um, so let's try changing that to DI. 
um, it might not, it, DI might only be an offset. Huh? Oh, okay. So I have four pointers. Um, but it looks like only two can be used as offsets. Well, this is good. Um, we're learning, hopefully. Um, let's look at the, even in 16 bit code, you can use 32 bit addressing modes. Oh, I don't like that. And so there's this forum for NASM and it seems like this is probably going to be where we're going to be asking things about. But we're getting there. We're, we're figuring it out slowly. We know what registers we have. We know what instructions there are. Um, and we know a little bit about addressing modes. So this might be enough to be dangerous. Um, but more importantly, look what we've made. Look at our boy. Look what we've done. Um... our big boy. But something interesting. We're all its fathers. Yeah. Everyone here. Um, I'm just going to end this stream now because I'm, I'm out of it. Um, so thanks everyone for dropping by. Next stream, we will work on cleaning up this code so that it's the minimum amount of C code. And this probably means redoing the buffering code in assembly. All right, everyone. Take care, Garnier. <laughs> it's, an, it's an ad.